The only thing we did was we altered the torque and added a couple layers of different material, which completely changed the trajectory, the performance, and even the feel between these two shafts. One other thing it did was also increase the price of the shaft. But as, you, as you can see, this is the reason why there's so many different shafts to choose from, um, because you could do simple alterations like this, and it gives uh, shaft designers a nearly endless array of potential products. This leads us to the next part, and probably the reason why you tuned in today, and that's to figure out what shafts you need or what shafts your customers need. Okay. Now, let's look at the four basic shaft parameters. We have the flex, stiffness distribution, torque, at least on graphite shafts, and the weight of the shaft to choose from. The only parameter we could probably confidently fit is the weight, as all the other parameters, of, uh, as I've stated before, have absolutely no universal method of comparing one shaft to another because of the lack of standardization. So this is where I come in. For the last 20 years, I've been testing shafts using the same testing methods and testing equipment. By now, this has covered over 50 different shaft manufacturers and over 3,000 shafts. The best part, at least for you, is that all this information is available for free for you to use. All you have to do is go to the, the Hariko Golf website and click on the Support tab. Um, there's a link that says Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index. If you click on that, um, you're going to see two books for which you're going to find all the information I'm speaking about today, or at least most of it. The first book is The Modern Guide to Shaft Fitting. Now, this book explains why we started testing shafts, goes into de in depth on each of the shaft parameters, and then explains our results. The second book, um, called The Shaft Fitting Addendum, this is uh, updated annually. And this has all the data or the numbers of the cut shafts as a means of comparison. Now, I want you to first understand that accurate shaft fitting requires accurate shaft data. I can't overemphasize this part enough. Another thing I'd like to say is we test so you don't have to guess. You see, we've done the homework for you. As we've tested all these shafts, you can truly compare one shaft to another. With the average graphite shaft trending toward the $100 range, you or your customers don't want to make an expensive uh, mistake. Now, we've spent years and continue this th today studying why certain shafts work well for some golfers and why they don't for others. So we created an index or a way to rank shafts in order of their stiffness. And we call this the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, or you'll hear, uh, hear me refer to it as DSFI for short. And finally, and most importantly, we came up with a relatively simple system that club fitters uh, could use the data and then fit their customers with. The reason this system has been successfully used by club makers and fitters alike for now for two decades is that the DSFI is based on the actual cut data we accumulated. This data includes the final club frequency, the cut torque, the tip and butt deflections, as well as the length, and then it's put into an algorithm. You see, our system's unbiased. After all, we carry multiple brands of shafts. But I will tell you this. I'm always more concerned with selecting a shaft that's going to fit the golfer instead of selling them what we have most in stock or provides us the greatest profit. This is how you can, how you can continue to maintain your customer base. Now, for the ease of fitting in our system, we selected to use swing speed as our baseline. For example, a shaft may have a DSFI number 
of, or rating of 85. However, the DSFI is not an absolute measure so that the shaft works best and only for a golfer that swings 85 miles an hour. This is simply our starting point. You see, there are other factors that one has to look at, one of which is the length of the golfer's swing. I want, I want you to take a look at the diagram on this slide for a second. In particular, look at the hand position of the two golfers. On the right, the golfer is taking the club back um, parallel to the ground. We're going to call this a full swing as the, the hands reach the top of the swing and there's a wrist cock to get the club in that position. Now over on the left hand side, the golfer has what's referred more to as a three-quarter swing or sure to be in parallel. Um, that's where the hands are, are somewhere between waist high and the top of the swing like the golfer to the right. Now some of you may have heard this is uh, called a laid off position. Well unless you're a swing instructor, we really don't care how the club is being swung. We're only trying to identify certain traits. After all, there's been many golfers over the years with very unique swings that have managed to play this great game well. Now, club head speed or velocity is typically measured in miles per hour, but very well um, could be converted to feet per second. To make things easier to understand, let's say both of these golfers have a constant velocity of 85 miles an hour or if you convert it, it's 125 feet per second. On this diagram, we're going to illustrate, uh, or it, we're going to say that it illustrates two golfers using a 45-inch driver. The golfer on the left with a three-quarter swing might have that club travel a total distance of 8.13 feet from the top of the backswing until impact. The golfer on the right, taking the club back to parallel, might see that club head travel a total of 12.19 feet from the top of the backswing until impact. These are just approximations to help state my point here. I'm sure you realize that the elapsed time of a, uh, of a golf swing is rather quick. For most golfers, it's between 0.9 and 1.3 seconds. And there's been several devices on the market over the years to measure this. However, it rarely ever breaks down into backswing and downswing. The backswing may take close to 0.7 seconds to one second long, leaving the downswing part of the swing um, and, and the part we're most concerned with uh, to be somewhere just below like two-tenths of a second to a little more than three-tenths of a second. Now, that doesn't sound like much difference, does it? Well, let me put this in perspective. If these two golfers both have the same velocity, then it will take a shorter amount of time for the golfer on the left to go from the start of the backswing until impact. Are you with me so far? Well, in this case, the golfer on the left may complete the downswing in two-tenths of a second. And the golfer on the right may take 29 hundredths of a second to complete the downswing until impact. We spoke about the frequency of a golf club. Well, if we look back at the average frequency chart that I showed earlier, an average A-flex driver might oscillate 234 cycles per minute. Well, 234 cycles per minute is also 3.9 cycles per second, as all I did was divide by 60. And a complete one full cycle would be a little over a quarter of a second, or uh, 0.256 seconds. Again, no secret how it came up with that. All I did was divide 1 by 3.9 to show the time to complete one full uh, cycle or oscillation. Now, if a, a shaft oscillated 255 CPMs, like an S-flex shaft in a driver, then it could be converted to 4.25 cycles 